Before we fit this model in Jump, I want to give you some insight into how we're going to model or decompose the means that we obtain for our fixed and random factors. That is, I want to consider just a subset of these observations and let's see how our model will actually handle the fact that judge observations are actually correlated with each other. That is, the observations for judge 1 across the four wines actually are not independent. But by bringing our judge terms into the model, by modeling the mean for each judge, we'll actually be able to remove that correlation or that non-independence. So let me give some actual values here. So let's imagine judge 1, again a very harsh critic of wines, rates all very low. So 1, 5, 11, and 7. Judge 2, still kind of a harsh critic, 8, 13, 17, and 14. And then judge 3, rates very highly on average, so 65, 71, 76, and 72. Let me start by plotting these points. And I want to give you the average trajectory for wines. That is, I've just taken the average across every individual and plotted it here. Notice that wine 3 is rated highest on average, and wine 1 is rated lowest, and then wines 2 and 3 are sort of in the middle. For the moment, I want you to ignore the fact that these observations came from repeated measurements, and let's just look at the variability here. So, looking in just wine 1, notice the spread of ratings. So, normally, when we're looking at the magnitude of effects, we do it relative to the variability in the observations around that effect. And notice here that the effect looks actually pretty small relative to the prevailing variability. That is, even though there are differences on average in the ratings of these wines, there is considerable spread around the averages. So if these data were formed in a between subject study, that is if these were totally separate individuals giving us these ratings, we might not see a statistically significant effect. And even just visually, we would actually see that the effect may be there in the averages, but there's so much variability in the ratings, we wouldn't expect that this is a stable effect. We wouldn't expect if we were to get more people that we would see the same average trajectory for these wines. But in our data, our judges made four ratings, so our model can benefit quite substantially from the fact that we can estimate, independent of the wine effect, the degree to which judges give high or low ratings. That is, we can remove some of the variability in this data because we have those multiple observations. So first, let me put on the legend here for the different individuals, and I'm gonna draw in the lines for each individual so we can see which ratings came from the same judges. And let me add in one more piece. Let me actually add in the actual averages for each of our judges. So on average, judge one, who gave very low ratings, had a mean of six, judge two had a mean of 13, and judge three had a mean of 71. Notice that these judges differed considerably from each other in their set points for making ratings. That is, Judge 1 simply gave very low ratings on average, and so did Judge 2, and Judge 3 gave very high ratings on average. So let's see how we can use this information to pull out some of the variability in these measurements. Let me draw in lines for the mean of each subject. And then, let's take a different score between each judge's observation and their average. In essence, let's center the data for each judge. So in the table, let's look at judge one. I would take the judge one rating for wine one, so a value of one, minus that judge's mean, six. For wine two, it would be five minus six. For wine three, 11 minus six. And wine four, seven minus six. In essence, we're going to center each judge's ratings of the wines around their set point because we don't really care about the differences between judges on average, we just care to what degree they liked each wine. So when I do this, I want you to see something about our table. That is, the ratings here are actually much less variable. We can see, relative to what they would rate on average, how much above or below their average rating they would rate each of our wines. So we've removed that between subject variability, We've removed the individual differences that have nothing to do with the wines, but have everything to do with each judge's preferences for how they make ratings. So let me replot the data now, and let's see if we come to a different conclusion about the stability of this effect, that is, the stability of the effect differences among the different wines. When I replot the data, you'll probably see that the effect looks very consistent. That is, wine 3 is just as much above average as it was before, 
but because the data points have now been centered relative to each subject's own mean, it looks very consistent. If I were seeing these data and I were to predict what the next subject would do on these wines, after we subtract their mean of course, I would predict that they would be very close to this average trajectory.